following movie, we'll take a look at the behavior of points in an assembly fem, which are used to generate 1D connections. Here we have two parallel plates, plate 1 and plate 2, plus a skeleton part that has the definition of our points, which were generated as a point set off of a curve. This, uh, these points were then wavelinked into each of the plate parts, each of the plate components. So as a result, we have six points duplicated in each of the two plates for a total of 18 points in our assembly. So if we were to take a look here, we can count the points across the entire assembly. Here you can see there's 18. So that includes the dozen that were wavelength off of the original six. And the reason why we've done this is so that we'll have those points available when we create our individual component FEMS. So here you can see our six points that were used to generate six projected point mesh points. So here's the projected point projected onto that face. Same thing was done in plate two. We projected those six points to create the mesh points. And then we created a 1D point to point connection using those mesh points, not the original points, but the mesh points. And we connected uh, them using pro the proximity method. All right, next we'll take a look at the behavior of making a change to the original point set in the skeleton part. We'll begin by moving the points, not adding or deleting, but moving them by just moving the original line that the point set was generated off of. So we still have six points, but they're in a slightly different location. And this update propagates exactly as uh, we would expect. Here we can see all of those points have updated in each of the component FEMS. All of the mesh points have updated in their locations. All we need to do is update the component FEMS for plate one and plate two. And our assembly FEM will now reflect the updated 1D connections between the two. Now, where uh, things get a little bit more interesting is if we were to add a point to our original set of points. And we'll do this by editing the original curve. Actually, we can uh, edit the point set. We'll make the, uh, the pitch a little bit smaller so that now we've gone from six points to seven. Now, if we go to our plate one fem, what you'll notice is that the six original points are still there, but the seventh is not. And the seventh point you would have thought would have been at the end, but it's not. It's actually second from last. So it, it adds the points not at the end, but uh, just before the end. So we'll need to um, add those points into our individual component part files. So we'll, we'll do that now. Here's plate one, and you can see it has those six linked points. The seventh one is, is missing. We'll go ahead and add that one. And we'll do the same thing in plate two as well. And here you can see the consistent behavior. It's the second one from the last is not um, is not there instead of the last one. So 
So we'll make sure we get the point from the skeleton. All right, and now that we have that, we can go to our component fems and add a mesh point for that point that we just added. So here we'll do a projected point, select the point, and update our fem. We'll do the same thing for plate 2. Go ahead and add a mesh point for our seventh point, which came up in the sixth position there. And update the FEM. Now here we can see our 1D connections, we have six of them, going from our six original points to our other six original points. We'll go ahead and add the seventh mesh point to our two sets there, and we have our updated connections. Next, we'll take a look at what happens when we remove points from our point set. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll move the line, we'll make it slightly shorter, and we'll also change the angle just slightly so that we can see where the new points are uh, relative to some of the link points that now are broken. You can see that in the alert in the bottom right, that two of those points uh, no longer exist. Those links now still exist in the individual component parts. However, those links have been broken. So here you can see the six points from the part skeleton plus the seventh one, which uh, is broken and is in the sixth position. Just as we had seen earlier, when we added a point, it came up in the second to last when we remove it, it's that second to last one that is coming out. So if we go to uh, the individual component FEMS, you can see that the mesh points have updated for those six locations, plus there's still a what we'll call an orphan mesh point that corresponds to our broken linked point, and that exists in both plate one and plate two FEMS. Here you can see our 1D connections also still exist. And the proper way to update this would be to remove the connection from the point that has the broken link. Uh, if we instead go and delete the point that generated that broken link, we'll lose our 1D connection. So here you can see that 1D connection. So we'd want to remove the pair of points from the broken link at this point so that we would then preserve our 1D connection. If we do it different, a different way, which we'll do now, which is to go and remove the broken linked point from our individual component parts, because one of those seven points in the set no longer exists, the entire 1D connection set will, um, will be deleted. So here you can see in the assembly fem that 1D connection is now gone. So continuing uh, along in this fashion, we'll go ahead and remove the other broken linked point and update our FEM in plate 2. Because there is still an update pending because the um, mesh point is no longer existing.
And now we'll need to recreate our point-to-point -point connection. Selecting the six uh, mesh points, looks like we only got five of them there. There's the sixth one for our source and then our six target mesh points on the bottom plate. Right, and that concludes the demonstration.